Bible talk about another name of God? The name Jehovah Kama. Jehovah Kama, which means the Lord whose name is Jealous. And uh, a lot of times when people think about somebody being jealous, they think of it in bad terms. But, uh, you know, when you really love somebody and, you you know, you don't want them to get in trouble and stuff, you are jealous of them. You know, you don't want them to go astray and go the wrong way, and that's the way God is with us. He's jealous of his people, and he doesn't want us to follow Satan and get into trouble and, and you know, and get away from fellowship with him. So I'm going to start off in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. It says, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, Exodus 34, 14, Exodus 34, 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So there it is. The Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Now we're going to go to Exodus 20, verses 4 through 6. And uh, if y'all uh, recognize this, Exodus 20 is where it's talking about the Ten Commandments. And this is talking about the Second Commandment, starting in verse 4. Says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them or serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So, you know, there's, there's kind of a promise in that. You know, if we love God and we keep, and we should, if we love God, we should want to keep his commandments. So, you know, he's going to bless. He's going to bless us and he's going to bless our children and grandchildren because of that. And if we don't obey him, then it's going to cause problems in our life and that's going to transfer probably to our children and grandchildren. So it's, it's a, it's a, uh, commandment of promise. And next we're going to go over to Deuteronomy chapter 4. And this is Moses uh, exhorting the Hebrew children before they go into the promised land. They're getting ready to cross Jordan and uh, Moses is, is getting ready to die. He's not going to be crossing over with them. So he's trying to, to exhort them to, to do right and, and be true to God and not go astray and follow false gods and idols and stuff. So there, chapter 4, verse 22, he said, But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, but ye, ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. So he doesn't want us, you know, bring, think of any graven images, no kind of idols, or worship anything other than him, anybody other than him. And then over in chapter 6, verses 13 and through 15, it, he's continued to exhort them. And uh, what God says, uh, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. So, you know, there again, he's exhorting us, exhorting them, exhorting us not to follow after idols and false gods, you know, follow the true God. And then we're going to go over to Joshua, chapter 24. And this is getting towards the end of Joshua's life. And he's kind of exhorting the Hebrew children again. They're, they're already in the promised land. And, he, you know, he's trying to get them to stand fast. And uh, so we're going to read Joshua 24, verses 15 through 21. And uh, verse 15 is a familiar one. It's a, it's a really good favorite verse of a lot of people. It says, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So that's how, you know, we as Christians should have that as our model. Me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And then now in verse 16, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve by the gods. For the, Lord our, for the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. So they're remembering. They remember that God brought them out of Egypt and you know brought them through enemy territory and, and, and uh, they were able to overcome them. And then verse 18, And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelled in the land. Therefore we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But now here in verse 19, Joshua is, is not, you know, he wants to make double sure because he's, you know, he, he, you know, I guess they, they failed in time, in time, so he's wanting to make double sure, he said. So here's Joshua. And Joshua said unto the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. So he's saying, are you sure? Are you sure you want to serve the Lord? Because he's not going to forgive you if you fall away from sin and don't turn back to you. You know, he's jealous. He, you know, he's not going to put up if you turn him away from him. You have to turn back to him. So, you know, don't turn away from him to start with. It says, uh, if you so says he will not forgive if you forsake the Lord. In verse twenty, if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. So you know he's done all this good for them, but if they turn from him, you know he's he's going to have to punish them and to try to get them back. But then the people say, and the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. So you know they just. Double down, say, yes, we know we're going to serve the Lord. And that's that's what we need to do as God's children is to serve him. And the first step we need to do to serve the Lord is trust in his son, Jesus, and his shed blood where he died on the cross to save us from our sin and, and rose again on that third day. And we just need to trust in that and give our hearts to Jesus if we haven't already done so. So I just pray if there's anybody out there that's not saved, that you will be saved. And uh, if you have any questions or like us like to pray for you, please let us know. And uh, thanks again. Good night.